Hello there and many thanks for joining us on the news and in NTA International. I am Abdul Malik. Adieu. First, the headlines. These documents represent our intention to be held accountable based on what we have freely committed to, to achieving, and which I am confident we will realize to the glory of God. Half of Representatives launches updated legislative agenda to reflect COVID-19 realities. Second 2020 Extraordinary Session of ECOWAS Parliament ends with adoption of referrals from ECOWAS Commission in the fight against COVID-19. Plus, U.S. President Donald Trump signs four executive orders to cut down prices of prescription of drugs in the United States. Many thanks for staying tuned. Now, motorists are grounding under the heavy traffic along alternative routes on the first day of partial closure of the third Milan Bridge in Lagos. Dotun Ogunyemi, who monitored the situation, reports that this was due to market activities and commercial buses operations who parked indiscriminately along the route. It is the first day of the partial closure of the third mainland bridge and already we are seeing signs of defiant motorists who even try to pass the barricade despite the presence of traffic management personnel as well as security operatives. Their reason is feigning ignorance of the closure notice as well as the alternative route available. I went through Illubiri to Carter Bridge and then to link to um, Ijora Lokba, as well as uh, Western Avenue. That's quite good. I also went from Carter Bridge. I did a ride to Oyingbo, no Ido, then Oyingbo, to ramp back up to Todd Mainland Bridge. That's quite good. The only problem that we're having is that I saw a lot of tanker drivers. We'll be talking to the tanker drivers to make sure that they don't approach that bridge until after about 10 o'clock. While the third mainland bridge is partially closed, this is what the situation looks like on Kata Bridge going to Ido. Although it is just one of the three available alternative routes, a similar situation was reported along other routes. I think um, I will apply the government if they can be able to I think, as in, employ more people on this uh, ferry transition you know maybe people can just be coming from um, um like uh, Morocco down to Egyptometer to the ferry that'll be fine as at the time of filing this report mainland bound motorists have been allowed passage after 1 p.m as the barricades at Ilubirin Junction have been removed while motorists who are island bound have started using the alternative route from the Adekunle Junction in Lagos Dotson Ogmiemi NTA News now, the second 2020 extraordinary session of ECOWAS Parliament has ended with the adoption of referrals from ECOWAS Commission and the fight against COVID-19 implementation and community levy, recognition of certificate, among others. Onengie Fineface has the details. Closing activities for the 2020 second extraordinary session of the ECOWAS Parliament commenced with a message of assurance of cooperation for regional development from the president of the ECOWAS Commission. And we have to recall the need to strengthen interinstitutional cooperation, mobilization of all our respective parliaments to be able to make or make the necessary support to member states. And the importance is the need to always have in mind the needs, aspirations of the populations and in drawing up activities so that we can achieve positive impact on the improvement of living conditions of our population. Members at plenary debated recommendations from three joint committees on the harmonization of specifications on automobile fuel in ECOWAS region, limits of gaseous and particles emissions, strategy for liquefied petroleum gas use, support for research, innovation, space science and technology. The recommendations were adopted alongside referrals 
for effective implementation of community levy to further strengthen the fight against COVID-19 and achieve regional programs and projects. Speaker Sidi Mohamed Tunis commended ECOWAS COVID-19 champion President Muhammad Buhari and parliamentarians for contributions towards the growth of the region despite limitations caused by the pandemic. As we draw the curtains of the 2020 Second Extraordinary Session, let me ask you that our duty as community parliamentarians is not restricted to when we hold meetings or other activities. We remain community members of parliament wherever we find ourselves. Plenary also received reports from the network of ECOWAS parliamentarians on gender equality and investments in agriculture. Members also resolved to intervene in the security and political tensions in some member states. In Abuja, Onengiye, Fine Face, NC News. Now, government and non-governmental organizations have been reaching out with palliatives to indigents in the society to cushion the negative effect of COVID-19 lockdown. The recent assistance is coming from Rosula Foundation, a non-governmental organization which flagged off a community-based distribution of palliatives in Abuja and its environment. Biangeli Ugoke, report. These are the individuals whose economic well-being is dependent and buried on the fringes of formal economy. The economic downturn occasioned by COVID-19 has taken its toll on livelihoods, particularly that of the less privileged. From Pape to Kado and Nyanya communities, the situation we observed is the same. Rosula Foundation is providing the much-needed support to cushion the effects of the pandemic through the distribution of food and essential commodities to the needy to rekindle the hope of thousands of the helpless and poor people during the pandemic. They have been giving a lot of food items to women remembering us in this very pandemic time. I'm so happy to see something like this. I'm hearing that they share something like this, but I never use my eyes, see it for the first time. This is my first time of get something like this. It's a five-day program targeted at the vulnerables in over 20 communities in Abuja, Lagos, Edo, and other selected states across Nigeria and abroad. At least in a day, we're reaching up to 2,000, 1,005 to 2,000 a day in Abuja. For the next six days, we're going to be doing that. Here in Nabuja, we are covering 12 locations. Rosula Foundation is a local and international non-profitable organization built to alleviate the impact of socio-economic realities across the globe. Obiagili Ugoke, NTA News. Now, the Nigerian Television Authority and the National Orientation Agency in Nassau State are firming up partnership to ensure local communities continue to stay safe amid increasing cases of COVID-19. Abari Solomon reports. This information is per the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA Lafia, and the National Orientation Agency say advocacy to ensure that COVID-19 protocols are observed by the people should continue to be implemented. State Director Priscilla Gondolo acknowledged the role and effort NTA is making towards containing COVID-19, especially in rural communities. The lifting of lockdown does not in any way indicate the end of COVID-19. And so let us all cooperate with government, the effort of government. Let us put our hands together. Let us trust what the government is telling us and observe the protocols that have been given to us. General Manager says NTA is at the forefront in the fight against COVID-19 since its outbreak in the country and will continue with the good work. Some you know, do not take this precautionary measures uh, protocols as very important. Because it's better to safeguard yourself than to have the, you know, the impact of uh, the pandemic. Uh, but to tell you that we are committed to just tell us, just, just get across to us, this is what you want to do, and then we'll go with him. Uh, you. Know. In Lafia, Abari Solomon, NTA News. 
Now, the COVID-19 pandemic is compelling global communities to adopt coping mechanisms in what is now referred to as a new normal. Consequently, the House of Representatives has updated its legislative agenda to reflect these realities. National Assembly correspondent Lamy Ali reports that the document was launched at a retreat in Abuja, the nation's capital. Tagged our contracts with the Nigerian people, the updated legislative agenda of the Ninth House of Representatives is an action plan that will shape the face of legislative functions in keeping with the resolve of meeting the aspirations of citizens. The updated agenda sets out key priority areas which include human capital development, security, education, economy, agriculture for food security, and sustainable power supply. House Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila says this event is for exchange of ideas and to enable lawmakers to learn from resource persons the best of options in delivering mandates. We have called this document a contract because that is what it is. A written account of what we owe the people and how we intend to meet our obligations within the shortest possible time. These documents represent our intention to be held accountable based on what we have freely committed to, to achieving, and which I am confident we will realize to the glory of God. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, calls the retreat a recalibration forum to reposition the Green Chamber for more effective service delivery. It would be appropriate at this point for me to urge you to draw from your collective wealth of experience and your constitutional powers to chart a course that will take Nigeria to a higher trajectory of development in a sustainable and enduring manner. The challenges are numerous, but the solutions lie in your hearts. And Nigerians look up to you for these solutions. The relaunch featured paper presentations on a variety of topics that highlight the relevance of the legislative arm in the wake of the pandemic from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News. And joining me live in the studio to speak further on the House of Representatives update legislative agenda as the Chairman, House Committee on Rules and Business, Abubakar Asan Fulata. Glad to have you join us on the news at 7. Thank you very much indeed. All right then. Now, the House of Representatives has just launched its updated legislative agenda. What makes it different from the one launched less than a year ago? Yeah, the, 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 well, the difference is that uh, this one has been reviewed uh, due to the setbacks we faced uh, due to the uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic. Indeed. So we scaled down some of the expectations, right. but we are still committed to the main rubrics of the of the of the agenda of the previous agenda right uh, uh we have already lost almost one year so we have uh only about three years left so that's what that's why we had to review uh the the agenda itself but we are still committed to the main uh th thematic uh, issues that were raised in the main uh agenda itself which is uh education security the economy agriculture health and human capital development all right looking at these key areas which you just talked about which is very very pertinent and the fact that you know priorities are you know the, the, the achievable you know going with the ever-changing trends what, what is different what seems to be different with this yeah the first, we, we intend to critically look at each sector for example take for example the issue of uh, education edu education can we continuously uh, produce graduates uh, for civil service or produce graduates that can self-employ themselves? Can we produce graduates that are permanently waiting to be employed by the civil service or we are going to train inventors? Take uh, agriculture, for example. All right. Now, our agriculture has remained essentially a peasant-based, peasant agriculture. Now, to develop, we must expand into mechanized agriculture with full applications of, of, of science. 
Okay? Now, take security, for example. We have all the armed forces. We have, we have the personnel. We have the human resource. But security itself uh, has been uh, 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 completely uh, digital, d d d digitalized. Okay? You have, a, and, uh, for example, uh, someone abducting an individual on the highway and then using the telephone to call the, 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 the relatives of the, of the, of the victim, asking for, asking for uh, uh, money to be paid before he's released. Yet, we cannot add, pinpoint the exact location of those people. These are the, all these, the, the issues dealing with technology. So the security architecture has to be completely revolutionized and changed. So these are all the fundamental issues that we, we seek to address in the, in the new legislative agenda. All right, looking at the fact that, you know, the legislature or uh, the legislative and the executive relationship is key to achieving this kind of roadmap. Yes. What is your take as this regard, as regards, you know, the kind of relationship that the executive and the legislative actually share now? It's, it's cordial. It's cordial and I want it uh, to, be, to be so. Uh, uh, the relationship between the legislature and the executive as it is now is cordial. Uh, especially in view of the fact that uh, majority of the members of the National Assembly are from the same party. We pledged to pursue the same uh, agenda of uh, our respective uh, uh, of our party. Right. And therefore, there is no basis for disagreement. The Constitution has provided for separation of powers. Uh, we are going to observe those separation, uh, separation of powers. We are going to respect our, our differences. Uh, but that does not mean that we are going to constantly quarrel. We are, very, we, we are going to jealously guard our differences and respect them. All right. And work to promote the interests of Nigeria. All right. Honorable Abu Bakr Asen Fulata, many thanks for Thank coming you on the News at 7 and sharing insight to the updated version of the legislative agenda. Thank you very much indeed. All right, then. You're watching the news on NTA International. And a break is up next. When we come back, there'll be more news to stay tuned. We have observed the lockdown. We have practiced the measures in order to curb the spread of the virus, but we can do better. The coronavirus spread is increasing daily and only together can we cut down the numbers and defeat the spread of the virus. Remember, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and a recovered patient cannot spread the disease. Do not stigmatize. Do not hesitate to report any case or if you have come in contact with anybody that has been infected with COVID-19. If you have cough and fever, please stay at home and call your state hotline. Find state numbers at www.covid19.ncdc.gov.ng. Remember, it is for your own good and for the good of every Nigerian. Let us do better and defeat the virus. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. NTA International News, Africa as it is. And many thanks for staying tuned. Now, there has been more than 15.7 million cases globally and almost 640,000 deaths recorded. According to John Hopkins University, as President Donald Trump signs four executive orders I mean, uh, aimed at cutting down the price of prescription of drugs in the United States. Let's join Uche Ugochuku for details and COVID-19 global update. President Donald Trump has signed four executive orders aimed at slashing down the price of prescription drugs in the U.S. The measures would allow discounts and importation of cheaper drugs from abroad. President Trump's administration has been criticized for its response for the worsening COVID-19 crisis as the number of confirmed virus-related deaths in America now tops 145,000. Infections are continuing to surge in India, where almost 100,000 new confirmed cases of the virus have been recorded in just two days. The country now has more than 1.3 million confirmed cases of coronavirus, the third highest number of infections in the world. 
Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro says on his Facebook page that he has tested negative more than two weeks after contracting the virus. Brazil is the second worst affected country with more than 2.3 million confirmed cases. The world now has 60,087,534 positive cases of COVID-19 with 654,954 deaths and 9,000,000 844,403 recoveries, as shown on Wodometer dashboard as of 6.30 p.m. local time. From these figures, Africa has 810,008 total confirmed cases, 462,374 recoveries, and 17,088 deaths. Meanwhile, Nigeria accounts for 39,539 positive cases, 1,559 discharged, and 845 deaths. That's it from here. I am Uche Ugochukwu. Many thanks for staying tuned. Now, air interdiction mission being conducted by the air component of Operation Adarindaji has yielded more positive results with the destruction of a new camp belonging to the AM gang headed by bandit leader known as Dangote in Zamfara Forest. Now, in a statement, Coordinator Defense Media Operation, Defense Headquarters, Major General John Neche indicates that airstrike which also resulted in the killing of several armed bandits. The operation was executed on the 23rd of July 2020 after a human intelligence report as well as a series of confirmatory area surveillance mission established that members of the gang, along with their logistic items, motorcycles and hundreds of rustled livestock, had relocated to a new area, a rocky high ground within the forest. The air component therefore dispatched an enhanced force package of the Nigerian Air Force fighter jet and helicopter gunship to attack the location. The attack aircraft engaged the target area, scoring accurate hits and taking out some of the bandits, many of whom fled the location in disarray, were mopped up in the following attacks. Now, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, condoles the Bronu State Government and humanitarian communities over the execution of aid workers by Boko Haram. In a statement, the Minister says she received with great sadness the news of the killing of five humanitarian workers who had earlier been adopted while carrying out the much-needed humanitarian work in the North East. She described the incident as a great loss to the humanitarian family, the Ministry and State Emergency Management Agency, Action Against Hunger, REACH International and the International Rescue, all of whom lost staff in this dastardly incident. The minister also extends sympathy to the bereaved families and the whole humanitarian community in Nigeria. Now, a Singaporean man has pleaded guilty in the United States, working as an agent in China. This is the latest incident in the growing standoff between Washington, D.C. and Beijing. U.S. officials say Jin Kun Yun, who was charged with using his political consultancy in America as a front to collect information from Chinese intelligence. The U.S. said a Chinese researcher accused of hiding uh, ties to China's military team reports Commissioner of Finance, Quara State, the president described his passing as saddening. President Mamadou Buhari, therefore, on behalf of his family and the government and the people of Nigeria, extends heartfelt sympathies and condolences to the governor of Quara State, Abdurrahman Abdurrazak, and his family, and the Emir of Ilorin, Dr. Sulu Gambari, as well as the people of Quara State. 
He prayed for eternal peace of the soul of the deceased. Now, Information Minister Lai Mohammed has condoned with Governor of Kwara State, Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak, and his family over the death of their patriarch, Abdul Ganyu Falonsho, S.E.N. Abdul Razak. Now, in a statement by the Special Assistant to the President and the Media Office of the Minister, condolences were also extended to the Emir of Ilori, Ibrahim Sulu Gambari, the Ilori Emirate, as well as government and the people of Kwara State, calling on the family of the disease to take solace in the fact that the late Abdur Abdur Razak lived a worthy and exemplary life. Like Mohammed said, it was not just a mere witness in the making of an independent Nigeria, but an active participant. His greatness achievement, his greatest achievement, the minister says, is the fact that he raised very successful children who also positively impact Nigeria in their various fields of endeavor. He lived long life enough to see his Excellency, Governor Abdurman Abzuruzak, elected and sworn in as the governor of Kwara State, is no doubt the crown of his incredible landmark achievement. Similarly, the All Progressives Congress governors said they have received heavy heart, but with gratitude to Allah for a life well spent and blessed. The news of the death of Abdul Ganyu Folonsho Abdul Razak S.A.N., father of the governor of Kwara State, Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak, the Progressive Governors Forum, in a statement by its chairman, Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu of Kebi State, described the demise of the elder statesman as a loss to Nigeria progressive community and indeed the entire nation. The governor commiserate with Governor Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak, the people and government of Kwara State and the nation on the loss. The prayed to the repose of the soul and the beloved father, Abdul Ganyu, Falonsho Abdul Razak. And that concludes the news on NTA International News at 7. Do stay with NTA and stand against rape and rapist. I'm Abdul Malik. Adieu.